Okay. For today's demo, I want you to make a prediction for me. Yes. The other day we talked about making observations, predictions, and so forth. So I have this ping pong ball, and I have a hair dryer. And I want you to make a prediction as to what will happen to this ping pong ball when I turn the hair dryer on top of it. And once you've thought of possibilities for this, go ahead and, and do what we call think pair share. Share it with a partner. See if they have a similar prediction. <laughs> okay. One ready? Okay, see if your prediction is correct. Observe the uh, writing on the ping pong ball, see what is happening to it. Now, my next prediction for you is what will happen as I start to tilt this to the side. Okay. And I'm going to start to angle it. Again, look at the writing, look at the way the ping pong ball is spinning. I can get to a fairly decent angle. So I'm almost at 45 degrees before the ping pong ball falls off. Okay, now, my next question for you is, why did it do that? Why didn't it just fly off? Of course, it did the very first time, right? Because it didn't set on there properly. But why didn't it fly off? Why did it stay in place? Any ideas? Yeah. Okay, uh, by wind tunnel. Okay, so an equal amount of air current going all around it. And you know what the name of that phenomenon is called? Okay, so what he's saying is there's air pressure rushing all around all sides of the ball. Basically acting, acting just like my hands are right now in holding the ball upright in between. Does anyone know what the name of that principle is? It's named after the person who first discovered it, put it labeled to it. That's one thing cool about science. Come up with something new, you can name it after something. I by the, by the name of Bernoulli. Okay, so this is called Bernoulli's Principle. And what's really neat about Bernoulli's Principle is it applies to everything we do in flight. It has to do with rushing air pressure. Now, there's a little bit of air pressure underneath, which is what holds it up. But it's the wall of air created around it, that air pressure that's moving on the sides, that allows this to stay in place. And you can see, even at a tilt, that air pressure was enough to hold it in place until Finally, gravity was able to overcome it at a certain angle there. Okay, so my next question for you is this. Now, you know, based on my tie, there's a beach ball coming into play or somewhere, right? Would you be able to get the same thing to happen with a beach ball? Okay, so make your predictions. Expecting to see a stream of air around the sides of it, holding it up. Others saying yes. Catherine saying no. Why not? I don't think it's going to be enough like, air. Like, okay. <laughs> so you don't think it's enough air? Okay, so let's go ahead and check and see then what happens. <laughs> and yeah, so there doesn't seem to be enough air. So does this mean that Bernoulli's principle is kind of a bunch of bull when it comes to larger? And we're talking about this affecting things as large as airplanes. We just saw that it didn't work here. Andy, you're shaking your head no. What would because the, the amount of, like, the, the ping pong ball is not as dense as the beach ball. Okay. So the beach ball needs more force to do Ah, so we need a bigger air, right? <laughs> Have you ever watched Home Improvement with Tim DeTolman and Taylor? What's he love to do to his tools? Yeah, more power. Okay. So I brought the bin for 2000. It's like this. And does he need help me by putting that thing loose?
Okay, so you can see that Bernoulli's principle does apply as long as you have a large enough air force okay, to make it go up into the air. And you can see I could also drive it to an angle. Now, if you want to do something really neat with this, on a nice day, go outside with a gas-powered leaf blower. You can put this thing up over the top of the school. It's great because you can you know, drag it over the crowd, the kids, and they just go nuts with it like that. <laughs> However, one little safety precaution I warn you. It's a day about like today, temperature-wise, in my sixth grade classroom. I didn't feel like taking them outside. At the time, I did not have an electric leaf blower. I only had a gas power. And it's that, you know, the, where you had to blend the oil with the gasoline so it was that nice, pure blue smoke that would come out of it. So I thought, well, I'll fire it up for two minutes in my classroom. It won't hurt just enough to show them. So I did it. And of course, it didn't really work well because as soon as it hit the ceiling, the ball bounced down. But the fumes were just terrible. So we had to open the windows to get some fresh air in. And of course, on a day like today, they were all freezing, so we all had our coats on, kind of like we were last week in here. So don't recommend the gas-powered one uh, inside. All right, so Bernoulli's principle. Okay, and you can see now why aircraft need a certain speed in order to get enough lift um, to take effect there.